A wonderful day to you out there, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to your weekend political show, Stand Point. Uh, this is the show that takes you around trending social political issues in Nigeria in just 60 minutes. Uh, my name is Dakbo Aruwajoye. It's been a week full of activities across the country. Every day, something new and interesting always happens in Nigeria. Today, we shall be looking at some of the issues and... Let's start with the good people of Benue South Senatorial Zone. They will be returning to the pool today as they elect their senator as directed by the appeal court. Uh, former Senate President David Mark of the PDP uh, will once again have uh, uh, the opportunity to test his popularity against the uh, former student leader David Onje of the APC. And, uh, the, from the anti-corruption angle is the allegation by the EFCC against a senior lawyer, Ricky Taffa, SAN, of having a long history of manipulating courts and uh, improperly communicating with judges. Uh, the Anti-Graft Commission provided phone numbers of Mr. Taffa, the judge, and bank document detailing money transferred from uh, the lawyer to Justice Muhammad uh, Yunusa of the Federal High Court, uh, Lagos, and former governor of Borno State, al Modi Sharif, is the man in the highs of the storm right now, having taken up the chairmanship a seat of the People's Democratic Party, that's the PDP. And don't forget, you can join the conversation online uh, by tweeting at us at TVC Connect uh, with the hashtag uh, standpoint. And let's go on this break, and when we return, I will introduce my guest, and the show will start from there. Are you going to use stomach structure in Nigerian parlance now? I don't really know what you guys call stomach infrastructure, but what I know... Already you have donated one million naira to the Physically Challenge. Thank you, know, God. God. So, you can so see you're, you're already beginning to use your wealth. Yes, you see, when I donated one million, that is, that is very good. When I donated the money, not to politicians, not to the people who can move, the Physically Challenge, that the society are forgotten. In the eyes of the All Progressives Congress in Indo State, this administration can do no good. But isn't it, again, I say, an exaggeration of what rarely obtains in Indo State? Tell me exactly what we have achieved in this, in this government in the last eight or seven years. Tell me. I can't tell me one unique thing that we can see. That Tell me any part of the world that you can say this state can be comparable to. No. There are many parts in the Western what world. What about in the, the Western ABA world? Safe Motherhood Program. What is ABA the Safe? Construction what? of modern markets. Yeah, listen to the construction of mega schools. Mega school is introduction for apartheid into the state, where you consult only one mega school in one local government, and you have about twenty-six or thirty secondary schools. So only very few people can go to that uh, schools. The other schools have no windows. They have no teachers. They have nothing. So there will be special students going to this mega school. The poor, the children of the poor will go to this. This is the apartheid we fought for. Also, Ekiti State is in the news again, and this time it's from the former governor, Otumba Adeni Yadebayo, to the incumbent Ayodele Fayoshi. In words of the former governor, Fayoshi is making mockery of Ekiti State. In the studio today, I have uh, three gentlemen, a friend of the house, Agbola Oba. Thank you for being part of the program again today. Thank you very much for the opportunity once again. And Honorable Remy Hazan uh, is a former lawmaker, Ogun State House of Assembly. Thank you also for joining us. It's my pleasure being here. And uh, last but not the least, Obafemi George is an entrepreneur. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank we you. have different issues to talk about today, but let me start with one that I know is of great concern to you. Are you from the PDP, right? Of course, I am. Okay. Uh, your party has a new chairman. Uh, is it is it so confusing? Is it substantive, acting chairman? Or so, I don't even know. What's going on in your party? Uh, by the constitution of our party, when any position becomes vacant before the tenure elapses, the constitution of the party provides that uh, the organ of the party at the level where such vacancy exists, this time around the neck, will meet hmm. to appoint a replacement for 
whosoever uh, has left that position, uh, who must be from the geopolitical zone where the vacancy uh, created uh, has actually come from. Mm -hmm. uh, the chairmanship of PDP as of today is for the northeast geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chairman, the former chairman, Abdullahi uh, Adamu Muazu, resigned his position and that created a vacancy in the uh, office of the chairman. Of course, some um, blunders were committed by okay. asking the uh, deputy national chairman to act, which is completely uh, wrong by the provisions of our constitution. Mm -hmm. And some elements of the party, rightly so, went to court to challenge the a decision to ask the deputy national chairman to act. Yes. And the court validly gave a judgment that uh, the deputy national chairman should vacate that office and a replacement be appointed. Of course, when the delay as per replacement was not coming, mm. Gulag, the former SA to the former president uh, on political affairs, uh, took charge. And like I said during the last program, whether Gula was right or wrong, that will prompt the party to do the needful. Okay, now today you have Ali Modi Sharif, the former. Ali Modi Sharif is a product of what step Gula took, which is now for the neck to meet and appoint a substantive. Let me feel chairman. your pause with that. What, what's your own take? Do you are you accepting him or you following the, you're following the lines of uh, some other party? Unfortunately members? for me, I'm not a member of the neck. But well, you're a once, member of the PDP. I'm a member of the PDP. So what's your own post? Once NEC has taken that position, my role as a party man is to stand with whoever my chairman so you, is. You prefer I don't have a choice have in a choice. this matter. Thanks for that introduction. Gentlemen, we'll talk about more. But we need to go to Sophia Ogezi, our correspondent. Uh, let's look at the rerun that's happening today. It's a busy day in Benue. Uh, Sophia, are you there? Are you listening to us? Yes, I can hear you, sir. How's it going over there? Is it busy? Yeah, very. Because um, elections are already, I mean, voting has commenced. Okay. And uh, it terminates uh, sometime 2 p.m. That's what we hear. Okay, and what's the mood of the people? To the former Senate president, who is very optimistic okay. that he's going to click the ticket again. His uh, other opponent, too, seems optimistic. So everybody is just on the optimistic side. I'm going to win, I'm going to win. Hmm. I guess at the end of the day, the results will tell who eventually is going to be the Senate president. I mean, the Senate representing the zone C. Okay, what's the mood and the turnout like? Very huge, very impressive. And uh, aside the little uh, issues we had with just one polling unit, every other unit has been very calm, although there's that, uh, you know, in patients of uh, who've been on the queue and all that, but mm. people have been generally orderly. They have been behaving themselves. It's been really smooth and peaceful. Have you seen Have you seen any of the two candidates? I know uh, one on the other side is Senator Mark, and the other yeah, side is the student, the former student activist. Have you seen any one of them today? Yes, we've seen we've seen um, Senator Mark, and uh, we we even have his uh, visual while he was casting. You know, his vote. First. Okay. He did his accreditation and then he, you know, he casted his vote. But for the student union or former student union activist. David Donje. Yes. He, the card, he had issues with the card reader. Oh, okay. So he got angry and left without casting his vote. What we do not have authentically now is whether or not he's going to come back to get accredited and cast his vote. Okay, uh, do you, uh, your own observation, do you think the INEC uh, was uh, prepared for uh, the election? Uh, so far, your observation? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because, well, I think the preparation goes in two ways. One, they had the, uh, you know, uh, thing to put together, but also they had the backing of security operators. Okay. There's an influx, massive influx of security operators in town. So, I mean, like the other polling units we had issues with, in less than five minutes, we had DSS, we had a civil defense, we had Mopol and all that flood, flooding the area. So it, it, they call themselves the um, response team that were put together, you know, hmm. uh, preparatory to the elections. And they are really acted as their name. So, so far, it's really been 
a, a collaboration between the INEC officials and security operators in order to, you know, have a smooth election. All right, and thank you very much, our correspondent, uh, Sophia Ogezi, and have a wonderful day also. Let me take it to you first before I go to this gentleman. David Mack is uh, uh, testing his popularity again, and PDP has not been doing bad in that area. Uh, do you think he might uh, get that ticket again? Okay, he might get the seat again. That, that. I very much optimistically believe that David Mack is returning to the Red Chambers. Uh, we've seen build up before uh, this particular rerun and the mood has actually been pro mark mm -hmm. more of what i've been able to view from uh, the field uh, but aside from that one will have ordinarily you know had sympathy for a former student union leader mm. uh, just because i was also in that uh, terrain before but at some level of Quality, Greenhorn don't actually get far when the chips are down. Yeah, down. yeah. Okay. and that's what I see here. All right, a wonderful day. Uh, let me take it to you. But now we have uh, a new chairman in the PDP, and the first though inside the controversy, should he stay? Should he go? According to the BOT and even uh, the the governors, also the National Working Committee, are saying this is our man. Okay, let's leave that aside. Except you want to talk about that. But how the first thing he said uh, during an outing was they are ready to unseat the APC in the coming election. That is his own uh, mission now. How, how possible do you think that can be? What else could he have said? Hmm. To be honest with you, he's a politician. Politicians are known to be the best actors on the face of the earth when it comes to grandstanding. Uh, if you had said any other thing inconsistent with that level of, uh, uh, a word was coming to my mouth, I don't want to use it. Uh, you know, with that level of buffoonery, quote unquote, it would have been seen to be. I have used the no, word. No, no, yeah, another word actually. <laughs> uh, so this one is pleasant. But, but to be honest <laughs> with you, to be honest with you, he acted the script that any reasonable person in his position should have acted. Uh, <coughs> that much, I don't see why, indeed, APC should pick issues. Because APC picked issues with that remark. That remark has now gained some degree of respectability mm. and currency. Because ordinarily, if I were to be one of the media strategists of APC, you know, sometimes quietude. He just, he just ignore. Uh, and that would even show the level of <laughs> where they they're still starting. They are in the they are in the stage of reparations and rehabilitation. <laughs> and to consolidate that, we've seen we've even seen the internal politicking of choosing a new chairman what it took them, and immediately the chairman was choosing the, the ripple effects in the leadership cadres yes. of the party. So Okay. Uh, let me go to you, Femi. Do you think this will make or mar the PDP, even though they still have that at the back of their mind, they're saying they have to win that election coming up? What do you think? From the perspective of a political scientist, I think they've gotten the growth process wrong. In the evolution of a political system, when you're building a political party, if you look at all the countries where they have successful democracy, you first of all have a leader, a strong leader, mm. whose personal positive ideologies becomes the ideology of the party. Now when the party succeeds, and what I mean by succeed is that if they can transform that, those ideologies into social economic gains for the people, then that ideology goes into the society. Now, after a period of like 20, 30, 40 years, they now begin to get democratic internally. Now, what the PDP has done is that when they were starting, they were trying to get democratic, okay? Uh, there was no single unifying leader within the party. Mm. So you have all kinds of caucuses, you have unifying leader within the party. Mm. So you have all kind of caucuses, you have this PDM group, you have one group, all trying to come together. Now, 
they've seen that that but has what failed. What would you expect from the largest party in Africa, according to them? You should expect uh, such. Supposedly, like Suppo the, according to that's what I said, according, according to, them. to them. Yes, <laughs> but, but, but like I said, they, they've gotten it wrong. Mm. What they should have done was to rally around a single leader and help them build. Now, trying to now that they have failed, I mean, they've been kicked out of government. Instead of to go back to that nursery school and rebuild. Now, they are trying to make the same mistake that they've made in the past. I don't see them transiting beyond this level. You think so? That's my opinion. Uh, you, did, you heard about then, and you heard him also. He of said, of instead of the PDP now to be going through rehabilitation uh, because of that, uh, uh, the, the, the failure, I mean, yeah, to win the last election. But now, do you think this move now will make, uh, like the same question you will make on my, your party? He has spoken very academically. He said he's a political scientist. Yeah, but the, the, the political system in Nigeria, most especially, does not, to a large extent, agree with academic postulations. Uh, however, for the benefit of information here, I need to let him know that Ali Muru Sharif is to serve out the remaining tenure of the Northeast. But somebody else could And he is to transit the party into a strong future going forward. Okay. Therefore, uh, if some of us had had the privilege of speaking to this process before a choice was made, maybe we would have shared a dissenting voice somehow. So, who, but who, now who, that who were the, the ones that concluded? It's the neck. Yeah. Yeah. The neck. That's the business of the yeah. neck. It's been done, and we, as party members, at another level so of don't have the same. We don't have any much thing to do than to cooperate with that decision and now begin to do what will actually achieve the purpose for which Ali Modu Sharif has been chosen. Can I read something? According to a member of your party, an outspoken person, uh, Femi Fani he's been, he's, been, he's been on the pages of the member? newspaper. I, that's, I think he's still a member. Because uh, you know he's fluid. Let me go to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me... Yeah, let me, let me the content of no, the fluid man. Yeah, yeah no. Let me, men who are not fluid? Yeah, but he's always... You know, you, know he's got, <laughs> <laughs> you know he's got the potential to raise eyebrows. He said, if we are comfortable with the likes of Ali Modi Sharif leading us, that's as a party, then on what basis do, did we criticize and oppose President Muhammad Buhari for appearing to support Boko Haram when he said an attack on Boko Haram is an attack on the North? If we insist on Ali Modu Sharif being a national chairman, chairman, then we may as well go and apologize to the APC for all our, for all our past and criticisms and condemnations and join them. For all is, that not an, purpose, is that not an indication that is sounding like like I said, we should go to APC now. Like I said, not everybody will readily agree with the choice of Ali Modu Sharif that the neck has made. But for party discipline purpose, even if you have reasons to disagree with that decision, there are mechanisms within the party for you to get your you know, opinion across. And I think what uh, uh, FFK has done in this uh, situation offends those mechanisms laid down by the party and but don't you think the emergence of someone that has got skeletons in his cupboard uh, doesn't offend let me use the word that the apc will usually use when someone has got skeleton in his cupboard mm. no court has made pronouncement on him okay because you because you you started then calling ali modi sharif a book Waram sponsor while he was in the apc now is in the pdp you're comfortable with that there were uh, judicial commissions of inquiry that the former president uh, Olusha Gwambasanjo set up that brought up issues concerning the role Ali Modu Sharif played mm. as regards the issue of Boko Haram. However, I think some of those things even led to him leaving the uh, uh, the, the PDP. Okay. Uh, I can't, I can't remember the MPP. Yes. To now, APC formation. He was the chairman of BOT. Uh, if AMPP. not for his disagreement with the terms of uh, bringing the, the APC today. together, mm. the he probably will have been in the APC today. Still have been. Still he have been. probably will still have been mm -hmm. in the APC today. But now he has left. At that time, the normal criti critical position of opposing parties. You will always want to find fault in the other side. Okay, let, let me take, let me get by what I'm about talking. Uh, like, because you said, because we need to still, what's it called? You need to still talk about this man, uh, Fanny Coyote. Because he said, he said, simply put, 
has the leadership of PDP gone completely mad or are they working for elements outside the PDP? I can start from the ridiculous to the sublime. <laughs> and from the ridiculous, I will say, uh, as my brother FFK taking out the searchlight again for another gold mine, uh, because uh, uh, FFK seems to have perfected the art of political <coughs> somersaulting to the new <laughs> gold mine in, you know, uh, on the political sphere. I mm. uh, haven't said that, that is the cynical, the ridiculous end of it. The subliminal part of it would be, in a way, in a way, it does seem that the PDP chieftains, especially the governors, who, you see, like my brother Riley said, mm. the constitutional architecture of the party is such that it was the neck that ostensibly made the decision. decision. But we know that in our political sphere today, especially looking at the two mainstream political parties, the, the forum or the class of people who are practically and empirically in control are the governors. Mm -hmm. Let's be very honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Even in APC. And so they, are part of, they are part of the neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and to be honest with you, it, it does seem now that the PDP governors want somebody that is, that is politically limping hmm. of the status of Ali Modu Sharif, Sharif because it will naturally help them consolidate their hegemonical this, uh, posture within the party. However, to an independent observer like myself, mm. and even not wanting to be ridiculous or cynical with FFK, mm. FFK's remark does, does seem to hold some water because it's mm. like somebody is now cutting his own nose <laughs> to spite his face. Oh, come on. Let me get to you, Femi. Though FFK said, uh, I still have to quote him, that uh, Ali Modi Sharif is gunning for 2019 uh, uh, to be the president of the uh, PDP. We we'll leave that aside. But, presidential uh, candidate, uh, presidential of the candidate of the party. And uh, what's it called? Uh, the governor of Ikiti State, Ayodele Fayashi, has come to say Sharif's choice for the party is, is the best. And uh, even contrary to argu arguments that uh, you have someone like Nuhu Rubadu, Bala Mohamed, Wilberforce Juta, Aliyu, Modibo, Hamed Gulag, a lot of people, Mohamed Wakeli, I mean, Wakil, uh, all those people are there. But Fayoshe is saying this is the best uh, candidate uh, for the Fayoshe PDP. is still a governor. A governor, right? yes. Yeah, right. But an individual in PDP now. I I'm not sure they've learned from their mistakes. At all. Um, Doyo Kupe posted something on his Facebook page, uh, I think on Thursday. And he said that, I quote, he said, the PDP and its leaders have a penchant for making grave errors of judgment mm. perpetually. And was referring to the choice of Sheriff as the acting chairman. Well, that's an interested party. Because you need to look mm. at it that uh, things are changing in the country. The electorate, their perspective about things, it's also changing. This is a time that people want a, a level of credibility. If a party wants to put someone forward, either in acting capacity or substantive as a chairman, they want someone that doesn't have skeletons in the cupboard. Mm -hmm. Either he's been convicted in the court of law or has been convicted in the court of public kind of opinion. Mm. It's, it's irrelevant. Mm. You want someone that you can sell to the electorate to say, it. you know what, this is a leader. He's a transparent leader. But as they that, said, he's got, he's like an octopus. His tentacles are everywhere. <laughs> Political opt octopus, that's what I'm saying. But it, it will come back to haunt them. It will come back to because at the end of the day, to a large extent, it boils down to the electorate. And I keep saying that was why they got kicked out of government because Nigerians said that, you know what, we, we want change. So if you're going to pick another chairman and you're thinking of 2019, you want someone that you can sell. Because you see, to a large extent, before you get to the point of picking a presidential candidate, the chairman is the face of the party, the chairman is the brand ambassador of the party. Yes. So to a large extent, I think they've made a big mistake. You think so? I think All so. All right, and we'll talk more about Ayodele Fayoshe. Uh, that's after this short break, because we need to go on this short one. Well, we'll come back, we'll talk about uh, the, the fact the former governor saying Ayodele Fayoshe is making mockery of the state. Don't go anywhere. <music> I 
Are you going to use stomach structure in Nigerian parlance now? I don't really know what you guys call stomach infrastructure, but what I know... Already you have donated one million naira to the Physically Challenged. Thank you, God. God. So, you can so see you're, you're already beginning to use your wealth. Yes, you see, when I donated one million, that is, that is very good. When I donated the money, not to politicians, not to the people who can move, the Physically Challenged, that the society have forgotten. In the eyes of the All Progressives Congress in Ondo State, this administration can do no good. But isn't it, again, I say, an exaggeration of what rarely obtains in Ondo State? Tell me exactly what we have achieved in this, uh, in this government in the last eight or seven years. Tell me. I can't, tell me one unique thing that we can see. That Tell me any part of the world that you can say this state can be comparable to. No. There are many parts in the Western what world. What about in the, the Western ABA world? Safe Motherhood Program. What is ABA the Safe? Construction what? of modern markets. Yeah, listen to the construction of mega schools. Mega school is the introduction for apartheid into the state, where you consult only one mega school in one local government, and you have about 26 or 30 secondary schools. So only very few people can go to that uh, schools. The other schools have no windows, they have no teachers, they have nothing. So there will be special students going to this mega school. The poor, the children of the poor will go to this. This is the apartheid we fought for. Welcome back. You're still watching Standpoint. We go to Ekiti now, and I have on the line the former governor of Ekiti State, uh, His Excellency Otumba Nei Adebayo. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, you, you, you were on the news of recent uh, calling, uh, saying that the present governor of Ekiti State, uh, that uh, Ayodele Fayoshi, is making mockery of Ekiti State. Uh, what does that really mean? Well, basically, um, nobody is happy. I, uh, most people of AKT origin are not happy with the way and manner in which uh, things are going on in the state. I mean, uh, we have a governor who doesn't seem to understand the essence of what being a governor is. Um, he, he makes all sorts of statements and uh, takes all sorts of actions that are not edifying for the state. Like, can you give an example? So, oh, for instance, uh, the way and manner in which he went to, when he wanted to have his, uh, when he went to present his budget, I mean, uh, governor dressing in a t-shirt and jeans and uh, making the kind of comments that he was making, it's not edifying at all. All right. Uh, you were saying that uh, the one I read really was about that airport, that it wasn't necessary. No, it's not, uh, yes, uh, frankly speaking, I mean, when I was governor between 1999 and 2003, I mean, many people came to me uh, with the idea that, yes, maybe we should, we should have an airport. But I do not believe that uh, a state should have an airport just for the sake of having an airport. I mean, in most countries, of airport, you don't have an airport in every single uh, major city. Uh, like I said, uh, there's an airport in Accra, which is only 45 minutes away from Madrid. And even that airport itself, is not of uh, much commercial value because of the uh, lack of uh, uh, passengers to patronize the place. So uh, spending money to build an airport in Adelkiti, for me, is a waste of resources. Okay, but it seems that you, you still have issues with Fayoshi, though you people, or most of the people will say, ah, this man is doing a great job in Ekiti. Uh, why don't you just leave him alone? Why are you always attacking the man? Well, uh, get me uh, straight. Perfectly. I have no personal issues with Dr. Fayoshi. I have no personal issues whatsoever. However, uh, as a stakeholder in the city, I believe that certain things uh, that things should be done properly, I believe the state should be done properly. 
you made a comment to say people in the state seem to think it's running the state properly. Mm-hmm. I disagree with you. Many people in the state are complaining. I said For some. Instance, I said I didn't I say all the people. I said some of the people. That's what I'm saying. Majority of the people today are complaining. For instance, uh, uh, the civil servants are complaining because they have issues of salaries not being paid. The pensioners are complaining. The pensioners are not being paid. The 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 uh, salaries are not being paid. You have a lot of uh, discontent within the state at the moment. Okay, uh, but are you are you keeping your house in order? What was the status of the APC Nekiti State? Are you because uh, we heard rumors, not really rumors. We heard news reports that uh, there's a faction in the APC Nekiti State. Has it? Because I knew everybody went. Most of the people. Hello? Uh, went for a meeting in uh, Abuja recent. How is, how is your party in the state? Is he is he united? Yes. Uh, recently, we had a main fence. Oh, I think we lost uh, him there. There is really said much, and I'll take it to you now. Uh, uh, Fayoshi is making mockery of Ekiti State, and he's ruled out uh, his reasons. Uh, do you think he's reasonable? I don't think it is reasonable, but I can understand the standpoint that he is speaking from. Like I can rightly observe as an opposition, but he should also realize that being the very first uh, governor of that state, this new uh, democratic era, he wears the toga of a statesman. Personally, I don't agree with the dress code that the, the governor uh, had to uh, yeah, yeah. the state assembly, okay. personally, because I know that in the standing order of the House of Assembly, across all the land, there is a, and as a minimum. Of the of a state I should assembly. know what dress sense sure. in the hallowed chamber sure, yeah. is. However, if the members of the hallowed chamber agrees with that dressing, it becomes official. What about this one? That but let me finish. Okay. What I just want to say here is that as a statesman that Otumani Adebayo is today, mm. I don't think anything stops him from walking into the government house to see Fayoshe and give him a piece of advice as a father then let him know that this minimum irreducible level of decorum you should exhibit. Are you sure let them not, are you discuss sure, it. Are you sure they've not had this statement? He will have a better pedestrian to stand today and say, I told him, he refused to listen. Therefore, I've decided now to speak to the public. Did, did, did they did they could have even written a letter? Yes. But, Something but, like that. Do people ask Ambassador you, the question is, do you need to tell a governor that you don't need an airport uh, for now, that the people... Oh, no, 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 don't go there. No, I'm just asking. No, no, well, I'm just no, asking. No, let me, let what me do think you that. think? The merit... Let me just ask The you. merit of a project will depend on the thinking of those who are driving the economy of that state. Now, if in the sitting of the economic team, it is considered desirable, and they are able to bring up their so, point, so why not? Wonderful. If not? You were going to chip in. Dako, mm. you see, politicking is a very, very comical, farcical, and childlike game. Mm. Let's be very honest with ourselves. To the best of my understanding, Ogbeni Raouf Aregbe is a man I respect a lot, but in the peculiar decision of our show state government mm -hmm. to build an airport mm -hmm. in Oshobo, when ordinarily the airport in Ibadan that is underused is less than one hour's drive to Oshobo, mm -hmm. if Otumba Niya Debayo could not have a a private session with Ogbeni Aregbe on that subject and is now moralizing <laughs> against Fire O'Shea. And, and to be honest with you, for me, Fire O'Shea is a totally unmanageable quantum as a politician. Uh, you know, Fire O'Shea, in, in a way, I technically agree with Otumba Debayo. Even when my brother was talking, you would see how circumspect he was managing <laughs> the, this thing because he shares the same political, <coughs> political platform with Fire Shea. Mm. Fire Shea is some PR wise. And for a state as, as perceived to be a state of erudition mm. as a kitty, mm. PR intellectually, mm -hmm. this is. Fire Shea is a, an unmanageable quantum. And you agree he's making mockery of the state? 
in many ways than one. In <laughs> fact, I would probably say it sharper than how Otumba <laughs> said it. But you know what? We also have to talk straight to ourselves when it comes to the issue of hypocrisy. You cannot now be lambasting Farioshe for committing to what I believe to be a superfluous airport project. Yes, so same, in, same in should be said city. of Otumba, I mean, uh, of, of uh, Ogbeni Ogbeni Rauf, 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 as Rauf. much as I respect yes. Ogbeni Rauf Adebayo within the context of the political coloration mm -hmm. that I'm flirting with, mm -hmm. which is the APC. I'm not a Kalkari member, mm -hmm. but I don't like being uh, dodgy. Yes. People know, we see through, if I'm being... We know. <laughs> oh, thank God, thank God that... Uh, Let you I'm you not lying to somebody. You, you know, uh, I, I know you neutral. You're not from any political party. I'm, 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 I'm a neutral. I'm a neutral. I'm a neutral. I'm a neutral. He's a Kalkari member. Oh, he's a neutral. I'm not. Well, you should have been in the center, really. No, I'm not. I can still win him over. You try so much. But he's a very stubborn man. Okay, let me go to you. Um, what about uh, this fact that uh, okay, let me is let me ask this simple question: Is Fire Shame making mockery of equity? As a governor, the office of a governor is that's why they call it the number one citizen of a state. Hmm. Um, it, it is expected of you to exhibit, I mean, certain level of decorum. For a governor to be eating bully on the street, cutting pomo with market women for the day, pulling down people's billboards, that, 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 that doesn't show. That doesn't show that. When he was contesting the election, that, that doesn't show that. Oh, you are but with the. There, you right? are with is the. That, we are with the people. He did that when he was contesting oh, the election. Okay, I mean, going around in body hogs, t-shirt. You are the governor of a state. People are looking up to you. He said he's the man of the people. Your Excellency. No, no, no that, that doesn't make the him the man of the people. But you see, unfortunately, uh, that's what Ekiti bargained for right now. Mm -hmm. Because you see, uh, the, the, the tree cannot complain that the leaves are not good. Because the leaves are direct offshoot of the yes. trees. Mm -hmm. So the leader comes from, from the people. And they voted him into office. E even though the process, I mean, is still uh, uh, yeah. contested. I mean, it's still contested. Mm -hmm. But you know, th that's, what, that's the person they put in the office. So they really cannot complain about who he is or what he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. But to a large extent, I think, I mean, he's making a complete mockery of that office of the governor of a state. And even the way he's going about ruling the state, he presented a budget of $66 billion. Mm -hmm. You're saying that, okay, $44 billion is for a current, $24 is capital expenditure. And half of that $24, you want to spend it on an airport. What is the economic connection between an airport mm. to a population of less than 3 million people? What is the earning capacity of an average Ekiti man? How many people in Ekiti can afford to buy a ticket of 14, 15, 20,000 naira to fly to Abuja? Mm. Half of them are farmers. The remaining 40 percent are civil servants. There's no iota of connectivity between building an airport and, and the economic level and of the people of Ekiti. Mm. It's a complete mm. waste of government resources, and I don't see that having a positive impact on the people of Ekiti or the economy. For me, I think it's a selfish project. It oh, wants yes. to do a white elephant project that can benefit him financially. I think that's the motive behind that. Abola is airport. saying so should be said of Ogbeni Rauf Arekbeshola also of Osho State. Well, I, I can't deny that. You cannot deny it. I can't. But you didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me go to you now. So, do you think with all this that is happening, is a man of the people according to, uh, in quotes, do you think Fire can still win that state? Again. It no, will it's take, not, it's not I mean, yeah, in. as in the PDP, sorry. Let can me, still let, win that let state me say it better. in an emphatic and incontrovertible manner. It will take the entire uh, formidable force of the APC three times what they were when Fayoshi won that election to wrest that state from him. Because the, the reality of the fact on ground is comical as people may call his tendencies as a governor, he's winning the people over. You think so? And it's the same people that determines who gets what. Let me, let me interrupt you and quickly. So it's going to be practically difficult, if not impossible, let to me, take let that me, state from him. Let me try and tell our viewers that we've been trying to reach uh, Larry Olanyika, the SA2 uh, Governor Ayodele Fayoshi. We've called you, if you're listening to the show, and I've called you like five times. Try and reach us so we get your own view or the governor's view via you. You continue. That state is my maternal home. My mother is from Ekiti State. And I go there regularly. And I feel the pulse of the people. What 
the, the supposed statement say on national television is not commensurate with the reality at the grassroots. Mm. So they need to go back and reorientate these people for them to change their perception about Fayoshi before they can take that state from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just <laughs> used the political braggadocio for you now. <laughs> Typical politician. <laughs> you know, he gave you his maternal <coughs> yes, ancestral yes. connection with the PD. Um, he told you that he visits the place yeah, of the And he told you mm. that, you know what, mm. the man who happens to be his own party man mm. now is uh, is uh, Mr. is Mr. Invincible. Mm. We know the story very much. <laughs> oh. I have always said, and this is the opt-in time I will What is the story? I will repeat it. <laughs> I have always said that opposition parties don't win elections, ruling parties lose them. Mm. It was a maxim I learned the hard way when I was a politician in England. Most times opposition parties don't win elections. The ruling parties lose them. Fire O'Shea was popular when he won that election. But you know what? The Akiti people did not sign the perpetual contract of, like, of, of liking Fire O'Shea with, Fire O'Shea with that mandate. They gave him a mandate for four years. Mm -hmm. And if that mandate is squandered in the eyes of the Akiti people, naturally, the opposition party will win. I'm not going to sit here mm. and say, oh, you, you, know, you, you know the two parts of it, I supported Fire Me against Fire Shea. Okay. Uh, and I would ordinarily wish that he loses the next election. But he's not going to contest. He's not going to contest. Uh, he's going to put, but you know what? Attitudes such as the one he puts up this regularly, mm. nobody can deny the fact that some, oh, however yeah. minute they may be, mm. some equity voters or electors are getting somewhat disenchanted. With, with his conduct. Okay, I have the first caller on the show. Body, you call it from Lagos? Yeah, hello, Dapo. Yes, uh, good evening. Yeah, uh, I'm really enjoying sorry. your program. You see, uh, truly, Governor Fayoshi needs a PR man eh, about mm -hmm. his uh, dress uh, code and what I do. <laughs> but talking about performance, I think that guy is doing great in AKT. Okay. I've never had a ticket who are being hold salaries and what I do. The governor just packed entire medical force of the state. Nobody is stopping. Hmm. Just like uh, what uh, Olawala just said, nobody is building an airport in Oshobo, very close to Ibadan. Hmm. Nobody is raising an eyebrow. I think we have to be objective in our criticism. That guy doesn't dress well. Fine. He needs to improve on that. Hmm. Yeah, I think he's taking good care of his people. Okay. I, 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 I deal with that already what he said. Because his people are enjoying him. Okay. So the only thing is that the head of the state is to uh, counsel him about his uh, dress code and his uh, utterances. That's my own contribution. Thank you. All right, then. Thank you so much, buddy. We need to go to the third, uh, yeah, the third uh, uh, topic for the day. That's the EFCC uh, saying that uh, uh, is not really happy with Ricky Taffa, SAN of recent. Uh, uh, there was there was an allegation. Let me go to you now. There was, there was an allegation that Ricky Taffa paid uh, Judge uh, Yunusa, is it Judge Yunusa? Yes, yeah. of the Federal High Court in Lagos. Uh, I think it was the sum of two hundred and twenty-five thousand naira. Yeah. That's right. And eventually, when I was reading the news today, he said he gave the judge the money for as a contribution for, to the to that the barrier. barrier. <laughs> I kind of wonder what what could could the relationship be. Uh, th that's not breaking news. Um, let me refresh our memories. In 2013, I presume, um, there was a federal like court judge in Abuja that granted bail in the sum of 750,000 naira mm. to some direct, some pension directors yes. who stood up 27 billion yes. naira. And he said because they confessed and gave him a bail on 750,000 naira. And that judge got suspended. I beg your pardon, can I quickly take Jamil from Abuja? Uh, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, Jamil, good afternoon. Yeah. I'm still holding on to the line. Am I on live? Yes, you are on, you are on. You, you're live. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Um, I want to point out that your, the kind of uh, analyst you bring to your st uh, stations, hmm. I, I see people to you all the time. Say that again? When I say uh, analyst you bring to your st uh, stations, hmm. I, I see people to you all the time. Say that again? When I say uh, fire me, um, what's this man's name? Arabic Tola is in uh, Oshu State, denied people salaries, hmm. sacked doctors. 
Why are you talking about trial? She forgot to keep. Have you? Have you? Did, did you follow this program from the beginning? I am. I am following it. If yes, you followed it, you won't be saying what you are saying because I have a, a PDP I'm man, APC man, and a neutral man, Bolaba, and he has talked about even even the actions of the governor of Oshun State also today on the program. People love him. I wonder why. What is this criticism about? Constantly, he repeated the sixteen zero, sixteen zero. His people consistently have given him their money. What is? Is it is it a mockery onto a kitty state? No, absolutely not. These people love him. The uh, democracy is for the people by the people. If okay, wonderful. What the people want. I, I wonder what all this is. it justified for him building an airport? Is is that justified also? The other the other analyst said something very peculiar. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. And uh, no, let me get uh, to you. Because that, you know why I was you know why I was like that. To the last caller yes, <laughs> is that you see. Uh, he, he may be a financial supporter and mm. there's, that, that's no sin. Mm. It's just that leadership in any respectable society must always lift the game. Financial profits from being pedestrian with his people, but from the moment he has been given the mandate, there should be a modicum, a modicum of, you know, do, do you know why they refer to governors as excellencies? The only person who should be referred to as an excellency is God. Okay. Let, so, I took it, should I took it from a bit. And I want to make the viewer, I mean, the caller realize that on this program today, can vouch for that. We've been very, very objective. Yeah, very, very They're not bad. just attacking Faoche. He said something about Ogbeni Raouf and Egbe Shola. That's that was right. what I was trying to That's uh, right. point out there. Uh, let me, I interrupted you. I'm talking about Ricky Tafa. Yes, I was saying that it's not breaking news. That I mean, we've had, I mean, occurrences like that where we know that okay, lawyers are in bed with judges and they do things that are unconventional, things that we might, uh, uh, th things that you, you, might, you might consider unethical. But you see, um, you, you can now call the entire judiciary black because we have one or two judges who have compromised and are betraying public trust. What, what I think we should also do is to take it a step further. And, and see that the, the fight against corruption is, is meant to be a collective effort. Uh, the judiciary, the legislative, the, you know, all the three arms of government, and even the fourth realm, which is also the, 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 media. the, 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 media. the media. All of us must come together and fight this corruption, fight to, corruption. To, to, to a standstill. Okay. When uh, you know that, I mean, stealing is not good, taking bribe is not good, and there are consequences, then people begin to shy away from it, and we can have a better society. Okay. Musa, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, am I on to some Yeah, you're live. Yeah, yeah, you're here now. Okay, okay. No, I just want to contribute to five shares uh, issues. Okay. Uh, the... Good afternoon. Yes, continue. Continue, continue Musa. Sir. to five shares issues. Continue, because we're listening. Okay. The reason uh, is called the man of the people. Uh, that is what he's trying to show, to be saying that it's a uh, gas, gas, it's a gas food politician. Mm -hmm. I don't think the guy has even traveled out of this country <laughs> to go and see what is happening in another country. Mm. Uh -huh. And he has said it that. I've sat with him a number of times in his, in his living room in London. So, <laughs> and he used to live in England. <laughs> but he's not disconnected <laughs> from the root here. So you, I didn't hear that. I've sat with him. <laughs> at, at least, I've been in his <laughs> living room in London, mm. obnobbing with him more than. 20 times. Yes. So he's traveled out of this country. That's not an issue. Okay, <laughs> let me go to you now. He, he, made, he said that uh, the journalist also, he, he mentioned journalist. And uh, that, that's, uh, maybe that's what Magu was saying, the chairman of the EFCC, saying that journalists and lawyers have been paid so much money to truncate uh, justice. My honest opinion on this is the journalism profession has its own ethics. The legal profession also has its own ethics at the bench and also at the bar. Some of the things that we have sensationalized so far could be handled by the professional practice uh, privileges committee of the various uh, professional bodies. I heard it, I heard it is on the line. I, I need to interrupt you and quickly take this call. Sorry about that. I heard it. You call it from your bottom. I heard it. I'm calling from your bottom. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, I'm Ayodeji from Ibadan. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Continue. You, you're on air. 
Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Continue with your, uh, your observation uh, yes. or contribution. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Hello, I'm here. Good afternoon. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Continue, please. Yeah. You know, basically, um, first, I, I would just like to make a comment as um, a, a citizen from a city state. Okay. And um, for someone that is born and bred in a kitty, that spent a, 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 quite a larger part of his life in a kitty, mm. I would say that um, our, gov our present governor is a man of con contradiction. Um, in terms of um, uh, decorum, mm. I would say the governor um, needs them um, to be more decorum, considering the historical perspective of our state and okay. the state of intellectual. Okay. In his um, comments, in his disposition to national issues, um, from the time of elections, he has taken a position um, for a PDP that is uh, going down and try to represent the boldness of the Kiti. However, the elections are over. When you want to comment on international on national issues, please do it with decorum. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, Ayodeji, for that uh, contribution of yours. I, so, interrupt, I interrupted you. I was trying to say that I want to believe MBA hasn't done enough on this issue. The NJC too, concerning the church, should be left to also do something, and NUJ as well. When that is done, we can now bring the criminal you, you aspect. Know, you know what? You know what? Uh, Ricky Tafa is an SAN. Uh, the last time he was in court, I think he was in court of recent. He came with, according to reports, he came with like so many something, so something something SAN. SANs mm -hmm. and cumulatively ninety something lawyers. Lawyers. Mm -hmm. And is that not intimidation against That's solidarity justice? from his, uh, his colleagues? From his Do you colleagues. think the president can win That's the, war? the angle where the MBA now has to come in and stand his ground representing a noble profession. He said the last time, again, the court, the, the case against him was that he was, he, 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 he hid people in his car mm -hmm. at two Beninois, which were meant to face justice. And that's obstruction of justice. justice. And again, is intimidating justice. Is that not uh, troublesome for uh, Dapo, a, a Dapo. new Dapo. Nigeria? Dapo, <laughs> we really have to be very careful. We really, really have to be very careful. If I had the ears of the president, I would tell him, mm. Mr. President, that remark you made about the judiciary was wrong. Was wrong because, you know what, uh, there are better ways to, to do something, even when you are... The, you, 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 know, you know the funny thing about... We were just talking about fire she, and everybody kept using the word decorum, decorous. <coughs> you know the meaning of being, being decorous? Mm. It means that when sometimes the shoe pinches you in a particular foot, you will pretend because you are a leader. All is well. You will pretend, <laughs> be, but you will make sure you have a schematics to rectifying the pain. The remark of the president regarding judiciary was wrong for me. Okay. The remark of Magu remark, uh, uh, regarding SANs and this thing, mm. it does not necessarily mean that I don't know that <laughs> most SANs in Nigeria know. They win more cases by knowing the judges than by knowing the law. Well, is it but, not worrisome uh, that uh, you see money? Money is changing that is, hands I'm coming to from it. a lawyer to I, a I'm, judge. I'm just coming to you. Yes. I just said that I will not sit here and pretend to Nigerians that I don't know that most SANs in Nigeria win more cases by knowing the judges mm. than by knowing the law. Mm -hmm. But there are internal mechanisms. The, you know, a rope, a, a Sikh like Andrew Aka, mm. an SA, mm -hmm. was deroped in this country? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You know that some judges in the last five years was were sacked. actually sacked? Yes. I'm not saying it is Eldorado yet with the judiciary, but at least the judiciary has an internal mechanism. Exactly. That the legislature, mm -hmm. that has somebody who is facing quasi criminal charges, still presiding, 
as the as the as the else man in the legislature innocent until found guilty oh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> as we round as we round up and, and he's from Ogusto, he's actually one day running away from MDLA, and uh, one day sitting in in in, in the uh, lofty chamber. Mm -hmm. There are mechanisms that can be put in place by the judiciary, uh, by the executive, two executive bill, and the legislature and the judiciary to cleanse this system. Okay. It's not perfect yet, but some strategic officers of the society must not let us lose confidence. In the judiciary, okay. as we so as we round up, as we round up, is there anything special uh, to be done uh, that that talking about the federal government to win the war against corruption? Uh, in in short words, please. There are two ways of dealing with corruption. You can decide to build strong institutions to deal with corruption, but you can also elevate people's standard of living. Hmm. Because you see, a poor man has no values. His tummy, shop no poor man. <laughs> his tummy <laughs> dictates his value. And when I say poor man, not just the man on the street, oh, yes. Yes. there are poor judges. Okay. Mm -hmm. but yeah, briefly too, also. Uh, I will want the president to leave the issue of fighting corruption for anti graft agency and face the issue of the economy. The economy is going down. Okay. And Wonderful. everybody is complaining. But like, can you make it as Let me just quickly that. build a castle mm -hmm. on the fantastic submission of my mm -hmm. brother. The reason why somebody who already has. 10 billion in an account is still stealing in addition to 10 billion that he cannot spend in two lifetimes. That's bad. It's because he's emotionally and mentally poor. Hmm. Poor people are not only the people mm. we see begging on the street. That's right. They are emotionally poor and mentally poor people that we celebrate in our society. Wonderful. What a very lovely way to conclude this discussion today. Bolaba, thank you very much for joining us. Honorable Remy Azan, also. Many Always thanks. my pleasure. Alba Femi George. Thank you also. My and pleasure. it's been a wonderful time with you guys, really. And that you that called from home. And you who could, who could not even reach us today. I know you must have sent your uh, messages via t Twitter. And uh, we are quite sorry if we did not reach you or you could not reach us. And next week is another time, but the conversation continues online. Uh, tweet us at, at TVC uh, Connect, hashtag Standpoint. Until next week, remain blessed and uh, God bless Nigeria.